Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to explain how we could perform shell to solid submodeling analysis in Abacus software. In the previous video, we modeled this tube as a shell which is fixed in one side and a concentrated moment is applied to the other side. In this video, we are going to simulate the elbow part of this tube as a solid, which is the submodel of the first global model. Please notice that because of the symmetry, we only model one half of the tube and apply symmetric boundary condition to it. Now we start to create the elbow part, which is a three-dimensional part and deformable and we use solid and revolution to create it. The green line in the center of the sketch shows the revolution axis and we should create one half of the tube which is to semicircle around this line. As the radius of the center line of the elbow is 16 mm, the center of the semicircles are in the 16 mm distance with the green line. Then we there are two semicircles with the radius of 10 and 11 mm. Now we use create line to close the curve of the cross section of the tube. And we want to revolve this part 90 degrees around the revolution axis. We go to the property module and create a material for the elbow. The material could be similar to the previous simulation which was the global model or can be different. Now we create a three-dimensional solid section and assign the section to the part. In assembly module we enter the model as an instance. It is important in any kind of submodeling that the submodel be located in the same position and orientation with the same part of the global model. At first we check the orientation of the global and submodel. In the global model the elbow part is located in the XY plane. But in the submodel the elbow part is located in the ZX plane and we should rotate the elbow part around the X axis 90 degrees. Now the elbow part is in the XY plane, but the orientation is not exactly the same as the global part. As you can see that the elbow part sweep between the X and Y axis. So we should rotate the elbow part around the Z axis by 90 degrees. By rotate instance, we pick the elbow part and by choosing the Z axis, we rotate the part by 90 degrees. Now the orientation of the part is similar to the global part. In the next step, we should locate the part in the same position with the global part. For this purpose, we measure the location of these points. As you can see the location here and translate the submodel to this location. We use translate instance and pick the similar point as the starting point of the translation and enter the position of this point in global model as the end point of the translation. Now both the orientation and position of the submodel is exactly the same as the global model. We go to the step module and create a static general step and 
we go to the load mesh. At first, we should apply symmetric boundary condition to the faces of the elbow because we have modeled only one half of the problem. We use that symmetry here and in the next step we want to apply boundary condition to the free edge of the submodel from the global model. For this purpose, at first we should show that this is a submodel and enter the name of the global model ODB file. We also tick the shell to solid submodeling here. Now we can apply boundary condition based on the global model to the free edge of the elbow. By choosing other and submodel, we can pick the faces and apply boundary condition from the global model to them. At first, we should enter the shell thickness. This thickness is related to the global model. Then we should define exterior tolerance. This tolerance could be relative with mesh sizes or absolute value or minimum of these two. For nodes inside this tolerance, transferring data from global model to the submodel will be performed by interpolation. After that, we should define center zone size. For nodes inside this size, the interpolation will be directly performed between the shell model and submodel nodes. It is very important that we have some nodes in this size. Otherwise, we will encounter with an error. Then we enter the number of the step from the global model that we want to use and the scale factor between the global and submodel. After defining load, we can go to the mesh module. We can use any type of three-dimensional mesh here. We prefer hexahedral and structured mesh. And we use 3D stress and standard mesh here. Since incompatible modes elements are more suitable for modeling of bending, we use this type of elements. For checking the role of the center zone size, for the first time, we set the edges of the thickness by three elements. By using three elements, there isn't any node in center zone, and we expect that encounter with an error. Then we define global mesh size. and mesh the part. Now I create a job. And submit the job. We can see that we encounter with an error which shows that there is no nodes in the center zone. For solving this problem, we should use another arrangement of the elements in the thickness of the submodel. We go to the mesh module one more time. Using seed edge, we create four elements in the thickness of the submodel. By creating four elements in the thickness, we have a node exactly at the center of the thickness, which is inside the center zone. We submit the job one more time, and this time we have no error, and we can see the results. This result shows the effect of the driving variables that were transferred from the global model to the submodel. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you are interested in solving this problem by shell to solid coupling, you can find the video in our channel. If this video has helped you out, 
please let us know by a like, a comment or a subscribe. See you in the next videos.